Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel Peterisms where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I have learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. And uh, I am running on about two to three hours of sleep right now. But I just am like, I'm filming videos, I'm feeling good today even though I'm like really tired and I'm like, you know what, just keep it going, keep it going until the husband comes home. He'll be home here in about an hour. So I'm, I just filmed a video for my new channel, my reality TV show channel, and I'm filming this, and then I'm going to film a review video. My drama channel video is already up for the day, and then I'm going to film my vlog, and I think I'm done for the day. So uh, I might even film a booktube video, depending on what time Alex comes home. So, um, yeah, so I, I've had a, a good day. I had to go to the dentist today earlier, and that's why I didn't get a lot of sleep, because I just, I couldn't sleep last night, and then I had to get up early for this dental appointment, because I broke a crown, and um, so, but I had to go back to the dentist to fix the crown, <laughs> so. Oh my lord. So anyway, um, I brought up the two Melody Beatty books. I have not looked at them. I do not know what the meditations say. So let's get into this and see what the meditations and Melody Beatty have to say to us today. Um, and it is right, it is currently, it is currently actually 4.33 p.m. in case you want to know. But it is uh, Monday, September 18th. So let's read the meditations for September 18th. All right, here we go. So, in the language, uh, the language of Letting Go by Melody Beatty, my favorite meditation book, the meditation for September 18th is Letting the Good Stuff Happen. Before recovery, my relationships were lousy. I didn't do very well on my job. I was enmeshed in my dysfunctional family, but at least I knew what to expect. Anonymous. I want the second half of my life to be as good as the first half was miserable. Oh, wow. I don't know that I can say that the first half of my life was miserable. I think that there were miserable times in it, but wow, that's a profound statement. Sometimes I'm afraid it won't be. Sometimes I'm afraid it might be. The good stuff can scare us. This is so true. Change, even good change, can be frightening. In some ways, good changes can be more frightening than the hard times. So in inventory, before I get into this, in recovery, um, we do like a fear inventory. We do resentment, fear, and conduct. And when we do a fear inventory, like I've always, like my first two, my first, well, using is one of my biggest fears, but like my next fear is fear of success and then fear of failure. Like those are my top three right there, right? Like when good things happen to me, like I sometimes don't know how to handle success or good things, you know? Um, I try to step into it and be proud of myself and I try to step into it and, and, and say, wow, like you did a good job with this, but I, I am not good at that, right? Like even when people give me compliments, I like shy away from it and whatever, like I'm not great with that, right? Um, the good stuff can scare us. Change, even good change can be frightening. In some ways, good changes can be more frightening than the hard times. The past, particularly before recovery, may have become comfortably familiar. We knew what to expect in our, this is so relatable. We knew what to expect in our relationships. They were predictable. They were repeats of the same pattern, the same behaviors, the same pain over and over again. Wow. They may not have been what we wanted, but we knew what was going to happen. Do, do you ever have like all these relationships in your life, like romantic relationships, uh, co-workers relationships, friendships, family relationships, and like your role in all of them, even though all those relationships and all those people, their personalities, how they act and everything is completely different, but your role in all of those is kind of similar. Like you wake up one day and you go, I'm a doormat to everybody in my life. Well, I woke up one day and I realized I'm kind of a, a yes man and a pe people pleaser and a doormat to like everybody in my life. That says more about me than it does about them. And all my life I wanted to say, well, this person is doing me wrong and that person is doing me wrong. And what I realized was, because I had a friend of mine that said this about somebody else years ago, you got to lay down to get walked over. And what I realized was, to some degree, I was choosing to be a doormat, you know? I relate to this meditation so much. This is not so when we change patterns and begin recovery. Recovering. We may have been fairly good at predicting events in most areas of our life. Relationships would be painful. We'd be deprived. Each year would be almost a repeat of the last. Sometimes it got a little worse. Sometimes a little better. But the change wasn't drastic. Not until the moment when we began recovery. Then things changed. And the further we progress in this miraculous program, the more we and our circumstances change. We begin to explore uncharted territory. And I just want to say, everything that she's talking about this meditation, you do not have to be in recovery in Al-Anon or recovery from codependency or adult child of alcoholic or be an alcoholic or be an addict or whatever, any, you know, all those kinds of things to, or any kind of addiction to make these kind of changes in your life and set boundaries. I just want to make that clear. And, and expect good in your life. That, that's not a, isolated to recovery, right? 
Um, things get good, they do get better all the time. We begin to become successful in love and work and life. One day at a time, the good stuff begins to happen and the misery dissipates. We no longer want to be a victim of life. We've learned to avoid a necessary crisis and trauma. Unnecessary. This is important. A necessary crisis and trauma. Because I think like, you know, I said this to a friend of mine years ago. It was like my friend responds to everything as if, like, on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being, like, not prob problematic or troublesome at all, and, like, 10 being, like, off the charts, like, you almost can't handle it, like, your life's over, right? And my friend, like, everything that happened to her, whether it was, like, she got stuck in traffic or, like, a family member died, it was always a 9 or a 10. Like, everything was so over the top, the way that she handled it, right? And I, and I said to her one day, I said, not everything in your life can be a 9 or a 10. And she was like, what do you mean? And I said... You literally respond to everything. Like, I mean, I don't care if it's they don't have a can of soup that you want to grocery store. Oh my god, they don't have now I'm gonna have to go to 15 different grocery stores. It's like everything in your life, okay, is so dramatic. Everything is just the end of the world, right? You gotta save those moments for really horrible shit that happens in your oh, I cussed on this channel, I can't believe that. I'm cussing now, so like it's floating over my other channels like this and my vlog. I gotta watch it. But you know. You gotta save it for the really horrible stuff that happens, for the passings of people, for the passings of pets, for the sickness in our life, for the horrible things that happen to us, right? Like, we gotta save those eight, nines, and tens for that. And then, you know, we have a lot of one, twos, and three days that, like, nothing really happens. You know, this is where I said, and so many people are like, I'm so tired of hearing Peter talk about this when I was talking about it on my vlog, but it's really important, you know? That one day I woke up and I realized, I don't have... I, I have some one, twos, and three days here and there. I have some eight, nines, and ten days here and there. But by and large, most of my days are four, fives, and sixes. They're not great. They're not horrible. I wake up. I have a good cup of coffee. I talk to my neighbors. I have a nap in the afternoon. I watch a TV show with my husband. It's not the most exciting day in the world, but it's not a horrible day either. I'm content. Well, the older I get, those content days add up, right? And I realize how truly blessed I am just to have those content days. And, and we have to focus on that, right? This meditation is really bringing a lot out in me. This is good. We no longer want to be a victim of life. We've learned to avoid unnecessary crisis and trauma. Because a lot of us, and I have done this so many times in my life, insert myself into drama that has nothing to do with me. I know y'all are like, well, you have a drama channel. I'm talking about off of YouTube, okay? Like personal life. Like, you know, I like want to have an opinion. I don't do this as much anymore. I don't really do this at all anymore in my personal life. But have an opinion about this or have an opinion about something else, you know, or, or whatever. And um, I, I don't do that anymore. Unless somebody asks me for my opinion, I don't offer it. And sometimes not even then, you know? Because I just don't want to get involved in it. So, unnecessary uh, Trump crisis and trauma is other people's stuff. And I'm not talking about being helpful. That's different, right? I'm talking about offering suggestions, getting involved, making their crisis your crisis. We've all done it, okay? I did it for a majority of my life. It, it's, And then it's like... It goes back to, well, I grew up in chaos, so I live better in chaos. I'm more comfortable in chaos, right? So let me borrow everybody else's chaos so I can live in chaos today. It's such an unhealthy way to live, and I did it for so long, right? And I almost, at times, like, when I started stopping that and started, like, really focusing on peace and serenity in my life, it was so uncomfortable. You know, my husband is somebody that is about peace and serenity. He don't get in a lot of drama, okay? His friendships are not a lot of drama-centered. His family's not drama centered. Like, he just doesn't get involved in that, right? And, you know, I'm always like, I was going to tens like this back in the day, you know? And, um, and, and just off, you know, I'd go freak out about something. He'd be like, You're not, this isn't even about you. Like, you know, like Oprah says, You're not in that, you know? Like, I love that saying so much. Like, when other people are gossiping about you, you're not in that. I love that. My Angela said that to her. She was going to my Angela and she was talking about, you know, like all these people are talking about me and Stedman and this and that and our relationship. And she goes, but you're not in that. Like that has nothing to do with you. That's them over there talking about you. That has nothing to do with you. That was such a hard concept for me to grasp, right? It was also a hard concept for me to grasp that it was okay for me to live in peace and serenity because I grew up in chaos with an alcoholic mother. I, and other than that, you know, like, my mother had a lot of mental health issues. I came from a divorced family. I was going back and forth to homes. You know, my dad's house to my mom's house, back and forth. I had a lot of bullying growing up and things like that. I had a lot of chaos in my life when I was growing up, right? Not just about my mom being an alcoholic. It was all kinds of things, right? And so I learned to survive in chaos. I learned to be comfortable in chaos. Chaos felt safe for me. So it only makes sense that later in my life I would seek that out because that's what feels safe and comfortable to me. Chaos seems like home. 
So when I started switching it out and wanting to get rid of the chaos in my life and the toxicity, that was not comfortable for me at first. I mean, it took me a good six months to a year, maybe even longer, before I was able to kind of settle down and realize I don't have to engage in other people's drama. Listen to that statement and ask yourself if you've ever done that. I do not have to engage in other people's drama and I do not have to make their crisis as my crisis. That doesn't mean that if they ask for help, we don't help them. That means I don't have to make their crisis my crisis. That was like so powerful for me when I started working on that because what I realized was I had been doing that for a very long time and it wasn't bringing me any joy or happiness, right? And I was almost kind of like manic from it. It was almost like a drug for me, you know? Of being in this chaos and this crisis all the time. Like it was almost like something was like, I was living in like a reality show kind of, you know? But it was too much. It wasn't making me happy. Life gets good. How, let's hear this one more time because this was so good. We're no, we no longer want to be a victim of life. We've learned to avoid unnecessary crisis and trauma. Life gets good. How do I handle the good stuff? Ask one woman. It's harder and more foreign than the pain and tragedy. The same way we handle the difficult and the painful experiences, I replied, one day at a time. Today, God help me let go of my need to be in pain and crisis, right here. Help me move as swiftly as possible through sad feelings and problems. Help me find my base and balance in peace, joy, and gratitude. And gratitude for me is the action that gets me to peace and serenity. Help me work as hard at accepting what's good as I have. Wait, help me work as hard at accepting what's good as I have worked in the past at accepting the painful and the difficult. I think that's such a hard thing. This is such a great meditation. This is something that I really, really needed to hear today. Um, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to read the other one because I just want to end on this. This was such a powerful meditation for me today to be reminded that I do not have to engage in other people's drama. I do not have to engage in their crisis. I'm not talking about my drama channel on YouTube for anybody out there that wants to throw that at my face. I'm talking about my private life, my personal life, right? I don't have to engage in all that. I don't have to, you know, engage in unnecessary crisis and trauma. I don't, right? And... I can focus on the good things in my life, whether that's a good cup of coffee, or that Boo Radley is doing good today, or that my dental appointment went well today, or that I get to take a nap, or I get to spend time with my husband tonight, or that it's a beautiful fall afternoon. I can focus on all of those good things in my life, right? I don't have to constantly focus on the negative. And I did that for a really long time. I constantly, and I think this is part of being an alcoholic and an addict, I constantly looked at the, at the world as half empty instead of half full. I don't want to do that anymore. I just don't. I only got so many days left on this earth. I want those to be half full to full days. Overflowing full days. You know? And that takes work. It really does. It's a mindset. It's a paradigm shift. It's in, it's in shifting and looking at things differently and how we've looked at them before. So anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I love you guys and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.